Hey, everybody. Uh, we will get started here in just a couple of moments. We had a, a fantastic registration for today. So we're going to give it just a minute for everyone to be able to uh, to join the webinar. Um, we're really excited to have you guys. So uh, we'll give it just another minute or so uh, before we get rolling. All right, if you guys are just joining, don't worry, there's no audio issues. We're just giving it a uh, moment for everyone to uh, to join. Um, we had a, a great registration, so we just wanna make sure everyone gets a, a moment to get started. Um, as we are waiting for everyone, uh, we really do wanna thank you guys for joining the webinar uh, today. We're really excited to, uh, to help walk you through how to develop and execute your Black Friday, Cyber Monday email marketing strategy. Um, so we're gonna make sure that this is your best uh, or your shop's best holiday yet. I can't promise that it's gonna be your best personal holiday yet, but fingers crossed for that one too. Uh, my name is Brian and I lead uh, Lending and Enablement for Seguno. So I'll be helping out through our webinar today along with Chris. Um, we're gonna monitor and answer as many of your questions as we can as we go through the presentation. Um, and before I introduce the presenter today, I just have a couple of other uh, housekeeping items for everybody. Um, there are going to be a few quick poll questions, so keep an eye out for those. We will launch them as we get to that point in the, uh, the presentation. Um, so we do appreciate your, your feedback and input on those. Those really help us to understand how we can be a better resource for you guys. Um, to those of you who submitted questions ahead of time, don't worry, we did see those. Uh, we're going to do our best to address them in the uh, presentation today. And if you have other questions during the presentation, please use the Q&A feature, not the chat feature, the Q&A feature, so that we can keep track of those and uh, make sure that we address them. Uh, the chat feature will not be monitored for questions. So really, uh, please do try to keep those in the Q&A. Uh, it really helps us to stay organized. Um, for some extra help to our paid users, we'll actually be hosting office hours each week from now until, uh, well, actually through December uh, to address some holiday email marketing uh, questions. So if you'd like a little bit more detailed help, please sign up and join Kestrel and myself and uh, we'll be sending a schedule out about those hours early next week. Uh, of course, for all users, if you have any questions, please reach out to our support team uh, by email or through live chat, uh, generally available 9 to 5 Eastern time, Monday through Friday. Uh, and then finally, there will be a resources PDF emailed to everyone who signed up that uh, is going to kind of be a great um, partner or a, a resource to go along with the presentation. Um, we will send that out again via email. Um, but if you would like to download it and follow along in the presentation, we're going to put the, uh, the link right into the chat. Um, so that will be at the top of the chat. Uh, we'll get it going here, uh, here in a moment. And then finally, to go ahead and answer the most common question of any webinar ever, yes, this will be recorded. And yes, we will get you a link for the recording afterwards. Um, so I've stalled long enough. I think everybody has gotten into the webinar. Uh, if not, keep your eye out for that, uh, for that recording. Uh, we got a lot of great content today, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, I want to take a moment real quick. I want to introduce you to Kestrel, who will be leading you through the presentation. Uh, Kestrel is our senior strategist. She has over 10 years of email marketing experience and has worked with literally hundreds of brands, uh, ranging from mom and pop shops uh, to Roku, Not on the High Street, and Louis Vuitton. Um, so I'm going to pass it off to Kestrel and uh, take it away. All right. Thanks, Brian. Uh, just do a little mic check. Can you hear me okay? Did I take myself off mute effectively? Um, to go ahead and start things off, um, I wanted to just introduce myself to everyone here on the line. I'm the new senior strategist over here at Saguno and very excited to have joined the team. My passion is to help small and medium-sized businesses grow and drive more revenue through email marketing. And one of my favorite things to do is to go off and do a lot of the work and a lot of the thinking so that our customers don't have to. And that's exactly what I wanted to drive home today as well. So before we jump in to the Black Friday Cyber Monday, I wanted to talk a little bit more about who's in the room today. So you can kind of know who else is kind of sitting in cyberspace with you. 
um, we asked you when you signed up what your industry focus was, and we saw overwhelmingly a lot of people coming in from clothing and fashion and health and beauty, which I expected, but we also saw a lot of other people in the other category. Now, I looked through some of the websites that signed up, so I have some ideas ideas on the other category, but if you want to go ahead and participate early, feel free to write into chat what industry you're in. Um, we'd love to kind of look through that later and be able to know what kind of other industries we've got on the line today. Also, if you have not sent out any Black Friday or Cyber Monday emails yet, don't worry you are in good company. Not only on this webinar, but just in general. I have been working on and off with clients for Black Friday and Cyber Monday for many years. And I can tell you, even the really big guys, the big brands with many, many marketing people, um, it doesn't always mean that they're ahead of the game either, or that they have all of their Black Friday, Cyber Monday sales nailed down yet either. So don't worry, we still have plenty of time. And um, I've actually got some pretty actionable tips so you get, could get started as soon as next week. And then finally, as far as the different deals that are being thrown out there in the audience that we surveyed here um, that's on the, that registered for this webinar, many people are going for that mass percent off or free shipping and bundling products. Uh, I actually saw a lot of people say that they were going to do multiples. So they were going to layer free shipping on top of uh, a site-wide discount. But we also noticed that we're, there were people who came up with free gift with purchase or some kind of other promotion, which is interesting to see. And I think you'll notice um, that that can come in handy as we talk through some of these more robust strategies. Now for today, as was mentioned earlier, we do have a supplemental PDF that goes along with today's conversation. Within that PDF are quite a few messages and sample copy and subject lines that you could utilize. And we'll get into that during kind of the second half of this presentation. So if you can go ahead and download that, great. The link will be in the QA or the chat. Brian will put it somewhere uh, and we'll go through it later. If for whatever reason you just can't get to it right now, that's okay too. Now, to start off first, we're gonna review Black Friday, Cyber Monday. What is it? What are the basics? What do I need to know, especially about this year? And then uh, we're gonna talk about how you can create a competitive strategy for this year's BFCM. And we'll do a deep dive into a planning calendar and look at specific messages that you can send. And then finally, of course, I wanted to leave a lot of room for Q&A, for us to interact back and forth, maybe even workshop through some copy and subject lines together. So let's go ahead and get started with one of the basics that I think is worth talking about before we get too far into it is, is email marketing just in general to kind of clear up what email marketing is good for or not good for for. So email marketing is the concept of marketing to people who are already your customers, already your subscribers. They have been to your website before or been to your brick and mortar stores before. They've signed up for your emails. And so now you're able to send them promotions and they will return to your site. And so that's really the concept behind email marketing. It's all about getting people back to the site. And they're your most valuable people too, because they're already familiar with you. They like you and potentially they've been customers with you before. So it's, you have a much higher likelihood of getting them to convert again. So wanted to throw out our first poll question of the day. Um, how comfortable are you with email marketing? on a scale of one to five. One being you have no idea, you're maybe even a little intimidated, and five being that you're a total ninja. Now, while we kind of, yep, we've thrown up, thrown up that poll. Um, while we're waiting on some of those poll results, uh, Brian, did anybody enter into chat any industries that looked kind of interesting? As I struggle to find my mute button here, um, sorry about that. No, we had a couple of good ones. We were, we're hearing um, a lot of very uh, uh, varied business focuses. Uh, there's a couple of wine shops here, uh, a couple of different um, food and seasoning, organic skincare, all sorts of really interesting things. But um, there's a, a really wide range of, uh, 
of shops that are represented today. So uh, it should be it should be fun for everyone to to take a look at the content and um, be able to see how that applies a little bit more to them. All right, great. Um, so, do we have uh, any conclusive results from that poll? Well, let's go ahead. I mean, end the poll here. So if you haven't voted, uh, catch us on the next one. It's actually really interesting. We've got a pretty good range. Uh, everyone looks like they are kind of a little bit lower on the scale and that's fine. That's why we're here. Um, so the, the majority of folks uh, are gonna be in that one, two, three range uh, with a couple of shops, about 20% of the shops saying that they're pretty proficient in email marketing. So um, it's been, it's a, a pretty overwhelming majority that are gonna be in that lower kind of entry level range. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. That helps me course correct with kind of the content that we're going to have, but don't worry. I've got some advanced pro tips in here as well that I think a lot of people will enjoy. So moving on to some Black Friday, Cyber Monday basics. Now I know it's a huge topic. It's something that I think got a ton of traction and I will say Shopify has done a great job of building out tools and articles and studies that go through it. So I'm not gonna get too far into it. Um, that's not what you're here for. You're here for more actionable tactics than some kind of philosophical review. But something good to note is that it's a hugely powerful season. Right. So all of my clients that I've ever worked with, even if they have nothing to do with gifting or, or you know, I had <laughs> had a client who was selling like industrial mats that just go on the ground at like restaurants, even they would see huge increases at the end of Q4 for whatever reason. So, I mean, it, it's it's just a shopping season and it is predicted that it's going to be up 20% from last year. Um, that's no surprise. It goes up every year. I wouldn't be surprised if we busted through that 20%. Obviously, the world has changed. Uh, COVID has restricted a lot, a lot of normal behavior. And of course, we're expecting to see way more online sales. Uh, I would imagine, especially as COVID cases increase more in the U.S. and more restrictions go into place, we're going to see a lot of sales online. And then, of course, something I'm very, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see is that so, so many people have, over the course of the year, gone to support more small and independently owned businesses and away from some of the big box retailers. And I think that's really great. And I think that that'll continue, especially as we get more into a gifting holiday. Of course, the standards that the big box retailers set forth for Black Friday and Cyber Monday is that they would give you a doorbuster deal, right? So let's say it's a 60 inch plasma for like $5, but there's like 10 of them. So you've got to like <laughs> run over your grandmother to be able to get into the shop and get that deal before anybody else does. And then of course, while you're there, you're also gonna pick up some other goods. So that's been the big box strategy for a long time. And it created a lot of excitement around Black Friday and eventually that became Cyber Monday and so on and so forth. However, um, you, they can't do quite the same thing so, that they've done in the past in 2020. So instead, they're starting their holiday season off early, Best Buy and Walmart starting off with a sneak peek or having Black Friday all season. Or of course, you might have heard of like um, gray November or just all of November as deals. So we were starting to see that before COVID. And of course, now it's just accelerated. And then, of course, we're inundated all the time with seeing really big brands doing huge discounts on their websites. So even brands that used to have a really good, really strong brand name have now really started to devalue themselves by constantly offering really, really big discounts right on their homepage and offering it all the time. Now, while those are tactics that can work. And for some of you, it's going to be the tactic you'll want to utilize. It's not for everyone. So let's take a look at some of the most innovative direct to consumer brands out there right now. Made.com, Stitch Fix, Everlane, Buffy, Brooklyn, and Beard Brand. These are all really innovative brands. And, you know, they're not going for those deep, deep discounts right away. You know, we're seeing maybe a few, we're seeing a gift shop here. And of course, they'll probably have something for Black Friday or not. Um, but just to show you that there's, there's a lot of different approaches here. So even if you do feel like you're constantly seeing these big, deep discounts, remember that, you know, there's, there's quite a few different approaches to Black Friday, Cyber Monday. 
Um, so let's talk about how that strategy could work out for you. So of course, with any Black Friday, Cyber Monday, you need a promotion, right? And what is that promotion gonna be? It's gotta be something that has to do with your unique selling proposition, so who your company is, and then the timeliness of Black Friday and Cyber Monday. So for instance, 50% off cozy sweaters today only. 50% off, that's gonna, and starts today, today only, that's the timeliness of Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Cozy sweaters, that's your unique USP. So free shipping gift wrap, free gift wrap on all one of a kind handmade lamps. We've got that timeliness gift wrapping, and then the USP is around one of a kind handmade lamps. Now you take that promotion and you combine it with an approach and timing, and that's gonna be the email strategy that you'll come out of here today with. So here in just a moment, we'll go through the approach and the timing so that all together, you'll know how you wanna go through with the rest of Black Friday and Cyber Monday. And this, by the way, this is one of the number one things we get asked a lot in the surveys that we run is how can I stand out in the inbox? How can I stand out on the inbox? The more you understand your email marketing strategy, the more you stand out in the inbox because you start to become more competitive. You start to speak a little bit more clearer to your audience and they start to respond more. So let's talk about USP. It's unique selling proposition. And so that's just you know marketing jargon for, hey, what makes you unique? What makes you stand out? Why should I buy from you versus someone else? And you've probably already had to run through an exercise like this when you started to develop your business over time. You know, like, am I going to be an organic, natural, high quality ingredients, nature focused kind of shop? Or am I going to be more trendy, stylish, modern? Um, you you kind of had to think about this, even when you had to come out with the, the what kind of template you wanted to build your store on. And then, of course, you also have, you know, why not just kind of the tone and voice, but also why would somebody buy from you over someone else? And then I normally see that break down into kind of two major categories. You're either offering up of something of higher quality ingredients or higher quality product, um, or somebody can get more for their money. And then you've also got innovation. So you're able to offer up something new or you take something old and you're able to kind of re revitalize it. So the reason why, and I know this can seem kind of academic, I promise it, it's going to really tie together here in a moment. But the, the reason why you need to understand this for a major campaign like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, is it will increase the sophistication and the clarity of your strategy. And that will result in more clicks and that will result in more conversions. So by understanding kind of this, it's going to be the lens that you view your promotion through. Now, I do want to put up a little bit of a disclaimer, you know, for the purposes of today, I really need to use some extreme examples. I need to give you very clear cut guidelines. But in, I want you to make sure that you know you have the freedom to customize those. And very rarely are things kind of so night and day as I'm going to present them here. But I want to make sure that I'm also getting my point across to you and that you can then take it and change it and make it yours. Because again, I went through and looked at the websites of the people who signed up for this webinar. There's some really innovative, cool brands that signed up. And I want you to make sure to take all of that innovation and, and unique aspect of yourselves and, and add it to the mix. That's going to make it really strong. The two major approaches that I routinely see for Black Friday and Cyber Monday are the traditional and the alternative. Both work. Both drive great revenue. Both do good. It just depends on, on how you want to promote your brand. So we've got traditional. And so uh, that's going to be more blunt, straightforward, one big promotion, um, huge sense of urgency. And I took our brand, Madison Page, and this is our brand for little girl clothing. And I built out kind of a hypothetical Black Friday promotion for them there. Obviously, you know, big and flashy. 
And then you've got alternative. And this is a little bit softer. This is going to show off more of the brand values, but also ties it into something more timely um, that has to do with the holiday season or being thankful, so on and so forth. I'm going to dive more into these in a moment. Um, the the anatomy of a traditional Black Friday Cyber Monday approach is that you've got a bold discount, ideally some kind of timer that's going to really help set you over the edge. Those are proven to help increase uh, conversion rates, uh, click rates and then conversion rates. And then some kind of product idea, right? Because people are very visual, they need to see the product. So this is a great example from Pretty Little Things. They've taken a, you know, the, the best practices and then really kind of put their own spin on it by add, adding some fun um, images here and changing up the colors. I've also included here some other examples of some, I, I think, very effective Black Friday messages. And again, you're going to see that you've, you've very blunt Black Friday sale and then the discount and then, hey, you could go buy these things, which again, people are very visual. Make sure to put that in here. And also as a little disclaimer, you know, today we are talking about Black Friday, Cyber Monday. A lot of the ideas that I'm going to put forth are kind of one large Black Friday event you could break it up into a designated, oh, this is my Black Friday sale, and this is my Cyber Monday sale. Um, that has to do with kind of our promotion strategy, and we could talk about how that could work out here in a moment, but you don't have to. Um, and the reason why I kind of like talking about it as one big sales event is because I think that resonates more with kind of the everyday shopper than Cyber Monday does. But that's that's, uh, that's me. Um, traditional Black Friday, Cyber Monday gut check. And I did see a couple of people get kind of concerned about this. Um, something you really got to ask yourself is, can you afford to really do a big blanket discount? Are you sure about that? Um, I, don't, I don't, you know, Black Friday is called Black Friday because it's the day when it would put the company's ledgers in the black, meaning they made a lot of sales. So normally ledgers are in black and red. Red means you're in debt. Black means you have profits. So Black Friday, Cyber Monday is supposed to give you a lot of profit. Um, so really consider maybe just doing a minimum spend in order to get that discount, like get 35% off when you spend 200 and potentially maybe make the discount only on specific items, items that you have a high margin on or that you wanna just push and move along. Um, Shopify has a great article about this that kind of goes in and explains and actually produced this example here today, but it's a, it's a slight difference. It's a, it's a smaller difference, but I think that it can actually make a huge amount of difference to you as far as your profit for the day. Now, an alternative Black Friday, Cyber Monday approach is, is very similar in you know, the bottom line, right? Like you're still offering something up to the customer, but you're doing it in, in a much more your, you know, much more with your tone and voice, much more with your kind of unique brand kept in mind. And so the brand goes first and then you have a timely promo. And you're also, also featuring lots of lifestyle images. So what I love about this PF Candle Co message is that they of course are acknowledging that it's Cyber Monday and there's a discount, but they're also playing into the fact that it's cold outside and don't you wanna get cozy and candles are really great for getting cozy. I know that we had a candle um, brand that's here on the call today. And so, I mean, I think that this is something that you might wanna consider when you're looking at kind of what kind of strategy you wanna do. Other examples here. Um, I've got one from Lisa and nice laundry, you know, one came out with like a special edition shoe or a special edition product just for Black Friday, Cyber Monday. The other is leading more with like, we're so thankful for you. Um, you know, here's pictures of lifestyle shots, but also a product shot. And oh, by the way, yes, we do have a Black Friday offer. So it's, it's just some, it's a different way of looking at the event. Alternative promotion examples can also, of course, 
include, a, you know, a variety of things that are, are, are definitely aggressive, like they definitely can compete. Um, they're very attractive items, you know, free gift card with purchase. That's something that I know has been really popular because obviously gets people coming back to the store as well. But you can get creative too, like, like doing some kind of charity giving or gift wrapping. You know, there can be kind of a lot of things. And just to kind of do a callback, this could all feed into your unique sales proposition as well. So want to go ahead and, and do a viewer poll and, I, and potentially offer up another, um, see if we have any questions as well. But for Black Friday, Cyber Monday, you know, which direction are you kind of leaning more towards right now? You're leaning more towards that traditional, really, you know, like, hey, it's Black Friday, bam, um, big blunt sale message. Or are you leaning more towards a little bit more of that alternative approach? So I would love to hear that. And then um, just to give me a chance to get a sip of water, Brian, <laughs> we got any yeah, questions? Absolutely. No, this is uh, the poll results are flying in. Uh, it's kind of like watching the poll results uh, last week, except a little bit happier for me. Um, so we've had a, a couple of great questions that came in here. Um, the, let me see if I can uh, proof through a couple of my favorite ones. Um, I know you're going to talk a little bit more about this coming up, um, but one question was, when is the best time or day to start sending out uh, Black Friday, Cyber Monday emails to customers? So focusing a little bit more on the timing of that one. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then another great question, do people not get annoyed with all of the emails? <laughs> um, I always thought Cyber Monday was only for electronics and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so for one, that's a great point with don't people get annoyed. Uh, I mean, short answer, yes. Long answer, no. Um, <laughs> uh, well, now that all the political ads are out of my inbox, just in time for Black Friday, Cyber Monday right now, I'm just, I'm um, sorry, just, just Josh in there. Um, no, I mean, the reality is everybody has kind of turned the volume up. So when you have so many other retailers also increasing and being more aggressive, I think that it's okay for you to slightly turn up the volume too and to try to match that level. Um, and I've done, I, I've, I don't want to say this with caution because obviously you could always go in a kind of a scary direction, but I think in general, you can allow yourself the freedom to be a little bit more aggressive. And I will definitely talk about exactly what I mean as far as sending cadence and when exactly to send here in just a moment. And then Cyber Monday, you know, really Cyber Monday was a term in like marketing speak that we noticed because we were like, oh, hey, people have to go back to work on Monday, but they're still shopping online. Oh yeah, Cyber Monday. And then it kind of got caught on as like another make-believe holiday. Um, it, the reality though is like, it's going to be a Cyber Friday for most people since I think two thirds of the, uh, two thirds of shoppers have said that they're not going to go in store. They're going to go more online this year. So, I mean, the reality is it's all going to be online, like a cyber event. But no, it is not um, just for electronics. You can definitely get in there if you want to brand something as Cyber Monday. It's more just up to you. And you've got to really ask yourself, can you do two major promotions um, just a day apart? Can you really like handle that as far as like from a planning and logistics perspective? Um, but okay, uh, Brian, where are we at with the uh, traditional versus alternative? Yeah, so um, before I, I give the results of the poll, just one, one fun story that I always uh, tell about Black Friday and Cyber Monday is that um, I've had uh, grandmothers who have told me that, you know, they're planning to buy something and they decided to put it on hold uh, for more than a month before they made their purchase because they were waiting to see what was coming up for Black Friday, Cyber Monday. So just to kind of go on your point there that a lot of uh, shoppers do really expect and they're kind of waiting to see what each individual shop is doing. Um, so sometimes they're annoying, but um, you know, it's, it's all part of the strategy on, on both sides. Uh, for the poll results, um, it's pretty neck and neck. So we had 48% uh, say traditional with a straightforward large promotion and then 52% said alternative, show brand value and tie it to timeliness. Um, nice. So right down the middle. Okay. Okay. No, that's great. Well, I've got plenty for both. So that is very, that's very nice to see. I like it. Okay, cool. Um, all right. 
so coming down to deciding on when and how much to send, I'm going to get into exact dates and times and all that here in a moment, but I want you to more do another gut check with yourself right now. Um, as far as sending out, if I was to propose to you two kind of extremes, one would be short and one would be long. The short version is it's three unique messages, but they're not that hard to put together. And I'm, you know, so don't think, don't think about me as too complicated. I think this is kind of like a nice bare minimum, three unique messages. This is good for people who may be short on time, but they still want to see a really strong return on investment from Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Um, this is also good if maybe your audience uh, is not as healthy, your list health is not doing very well, and your open rates are below 10%. So if that's kind of you, I would go more in the short realm. That's kind of a minimum. Now, on the longer side, I'm going to recommend that you have three, or sorry, seven messages, three of which are remails. And again, they're not very time intensive, so don't get, don't get too scared. Um, but it is a little bit more of an aggressive strategy. It would start as soon as next week. And this is going to be great if you really want to get as much as you can out of the holiday and that you're already seeing your audience perform pretty well. Your open rates are already above 20%. This is a great time to be a little bit more aggressive because your audience is going to expect it. And frankly, their inbox is going to be really full. Uh, so it's going to be hard for them to focus on any one retailer or another. So the key is to just kind of be top of mind anyways. And so these are kind of the two different strategies you could go with either the short or the long. I did put stretch goals in here for each. So if you, if you can do the short and you've, you've got some extra time, then please go set up your three-part uh, abandonment message um, series. You've got to get that in there. That is going to be key. And then if you finish with the long, the seven messages, then you've got to go in and make sure that abandonment, welcome, lapse purchaser, and review request are all set up. Those are going to not only get you more conversions, but they're really going to set you up for success for 2021. So that is also very key. We'll talk about that um, a little bit more at the end as well. But we've got some stretch goals in there for those overachievers that we've got here in the audience. Um, so just a basic decision matrix. You know, are you going that traditional or that alternative route? And then are you a little more crunched for time and gonna do shorter? Or are you, what a hate, whatever it takes, gonna go longer? That's gonna be your approach. That's gonna be your timing that goes into your overall strategy today. So you should find yourself in one of these quadrants. And because, hey, I'm, I'm curious and I know Brian is too, which one are you? Which one are you thinking about more? Because we're about to walk through all of them. So I would really like to know which which of the uh, number one, the three part short traditional, number two, short alternative, number three, long traditional, number four, long alternative. You let me know. Like I said, we're going to go through all of them. We're gonna, we have information for all of them, but very curious to know which ones may be more appealing for you right now. Well, I've got those, uh, those results are coming in um, and I may have to go back and check and see if anybody changed their, uh, their vote between um, you know, the, the quadrant that we have here versus the, uh, the previous question. Um, but we did have a couple other really good questions come in. Um, so I just want to pass those on to you, Kestrel. So uh, one of these questions, uh, if I'm an online store only and I want to partake in Small Business Saturday, how do I present something for all three without sending three separate emails or deals? Um, and I'm, I'm assuming all three are, we're talking about Black Friday, Small Business Saturday, and then Cyber Monday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So this would probably deserve a little bit more of a like question around like, who is the business and what do you want to do? And you could definitely make it the same promotion and market as like, a Black Friday extended sale. So in, in my mind, at least, right? Because I think most people understand what Black Friday is. The, like that has the best brand recognition. And I think Small Business Saturday is, I love it. Like, you know, I, I will be participating in that. I love Small Business Saturday. Um, 
but I think you could easily position like get Black Friday deals on Small Business Saturday um, and just reinstate in the messaging hey, we are a small business. <laughs> like, <laughs> make sure they know that. And thank you so much for supporting us, this small business. Thanks for sharing, you know, your hard-earned dollars with us. We're not the big box retailer. Thanks for coming over to us. So I, if, if, it, if it was to me, I would use the brand recognition of Black Friday, but reminding people that you are a small business. And then I don't think that you need to do, I think, for quote unquote Cyber Monday, you could just have an extended Black Friday deal instead of marketing it as a whole new Cyber Monday. But let's go through the examples and then follow up with me at the end of today to see if that makes sense for you. All right, seeing the poll results, um, I'm thinking kind of crunched for time. Looks like we've got kind of the most people in there. So the seven part series, not as appealing, but. Uh, Let's, uh, like I said, let's get into it first and then see what you guys say. All right. So moving into the th uh, three-part short calendar. So here's a look at November. Here's where we are at the 12th right here. The first message that I would recommend you send out is going to be on the 23rd. It's message number one. And I would recommend that you can do, you can do this message a couple of different ways. You could do it as an early Black Friday deal if you want to right so it could be its own deal and it lasts right up until it could last just that day but it could be its own little universe if you wanted it to be and then you have black friday and then you have an extended day you could also do it as this is one big black friday sale i'm just going to make this up but let's say it's 20 percent off or free gift with purchase and this is just basically three messages about the same promotion. And then another sneaky way to do it, kind of a third way to, to do it if you wanted to, is you could make message number one is not actually a promotion itself at all. It just says get ready for Black Friday um, and maybe has a countdown timer to, into it to get people really amped up. And if you have a, it depends on kind of your audience, you know, that might be something that they get really excited about. And then they're really looking forward to your message on Friday. For the sake of today and kind of, I would say, I don't want to say the lowest common denominator, but like one of the easier things you can do, especially if like developing all these different promotions seems a little overwhelming to you, is I would take one promotion and stretch it out over these three messages. I think that's kind of the easiest thing to do. Obviously, a little bit more difficult, but potentially could yield better results is that you have a timed promotion with each message. Now, as far as when you send this, think about when your audience is most active or most likely to be on their phone or online. Normally, tried and true for me is early in the morning because then people see it right when they wake up and they're looking through their emails. Yes, you, I've seen other, you know, I like other times of the day to send to. I like midday. I like after lunch. I like before dinner. I like before bedtime. I like, I like those times of the day too, but Overall, I think early in the morning, especially for this time range, seems to work out the best. If you want to get really nerdy with it, you can always go to Google Analytics and kind of see if there's some site traffic trends that you're noticing. Um, that, that could be another way to take a look at it as well. Now, as far as that first message goes, oh, actually, you know what? So sometimes I put slides in here just to remind myself of something because I know I'm going to forget. We have a new template store. And for paid users, many, most of the templates are 100% free. So you can go in there. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Just get a template. I've already put in some copy into most of these templates. You just need to customize it a little bit so it really resonates with your brand. And then you can send it out. It will take you moments, cutting down a lot on your overall time. Um, if you're not a paid user, don't worry. These things aren't millions of dollars. There's just a couple of bucks here and there. So don't buy a coffee, buy a template, and you'll end up having a pretty good return on investment. Also, 
uh, another thing I'm really excited about, we, we've done a lot of customer surveys lately, a lot of surveys to be like, hey, what do you want? Um, and overwhelmingly, we got a lot of people saying that they wanted more Indian related holidays, um, such as Diwali, which is coming up. And so we've got enough people to vote for it. So we ended up coming out with a brand new Diwali, uh, several Diwali templates that are that, will, that are already launched in the store. So if you do have an idea for a template that you really need, make sure to go ahead and just submit a support case, let us know. And if we get enough votes for it, we'll, we'll make it, we'll turn it around. So just a little bit of info there on that, that new template store. Of course, we do have several free templates that you can utilize and customize to your heart's delight, and they work great. But let's talk about, oh, and the other reason I was going to say it is please don't think I'm a graphic designer at all. I just took our templates and played with them because I don't have any graphic design skills, nor do I want to spin my wheels doing any of that, that I don't need to reinvent the wheel. So let's look at the three part short traditional Black Friday, Cyber Monday. So the first can be a sneak peek message. The second can be the day of, and the third is a last chance message. And just as far as the key highlights here, the first, the subject line even says sneak peek and the pre-header text says leather jackets are 50% off. And then the first thing they see is that it's the early Black Friday deals. So Black Friday, I'm kind of utilizing as its own brand name. And I'm kind of saying, hey, you can get in on it before anyone else. And then I even use in the text here at the bottom, like, okay, so we're letting our fans see this early. It's a sneak peek. Then with the message that goes out on the day of Black Friday, I want to use Black Friday and then the discount. I want to have that right as maybe the first few words. It's off leather jacket specifically. And then I put a little bit of a sense of urgency with here. It's not going to last long. It's not going to last long here in the copy. And then on the third message, uh, it's your last chance to get 50% off. So last chance is that sense of urgency. I have a countdown timer. And of course here it says 21 days because that's what it is, but it would actually be like today. So a few hours left and 50% off leather jackets while supplies last, we're running out. So it creates that sense of urgency again. And then in all of these messages, I would make sure to have the leather jackets um, just right there to show that it is a discount on what product it is so people can easily click through there. Now, here's where that PDF comes in handy. Um, so if you have it, great. If you don't have it, don't worry. Uh, we'll make sure that you get it. But you can go to the PDF and you can take a look at the message. And then I've come in here and written quite a few subject lines for you to utilize along with copy ideas. Now, remember, I don't know your brand, so I had to make some guesses here. And so I think it, it's a, it's, you can always just send it with some generic copy, of course, but anybody could do that. You customize it, you make it more special, people pay attention to it, they'll click through, they'll buy. Um, so where I might say just something like, we're starting the deals early, you know, if you do sell, um, you know, comfy sweaters, we're starting the comfy sweaters deals early. You know, you can, you can customize it even just that much um, can kind of help people visualize the product a little bit more. Um, then on the short alternative, so the first message, you're going to announce whatever that timely promotion is, plus that unique selling proposition that you have. So for this one, I'm pretending Madison, so Madison Page, our, our same brand. And by the way, this is the same template for all. Um, so I used one template three different ways. Very easy to do. You just re replace the images or just take them out altogether. So here, um, my, my big promotion for Madison Page was that we were introducing new products. That's what the, the event or the promotion, the timely thing was. So we've got new jackets, new winter dresses, new sweaters. Take a look now. And then I put in a little line about how we've been making clothes for the past 20 years and we only use the finest quality um, fabrics. Then on the day of, or if you want to, you can make it much more of a Thanksgiving message. We can say, you know, we're so thankful for you. Have something kind of fun in there. And then of course, take a look at our new items. And then the last chance is that I, instead of talking about all the new items, I honed in just on dresses 
and I decided to talk more about holiday photos because that's something that kind of goes hand in hand like my audience would really care about that and again of course I would have product shots of those holiday dresses or of those new Christmas products in here so that's kind of goes through um, exactly what I just mentioned there and again you can come in and in the PDF, you'll see lots of different examples here for how you could customize these messages to make them more yourself too. Now, as far as the seven part goes, and I know if, for some people this might look intimidating for other people and it might be like, oh, what, that's all you're gonna do? Um, so it kind of depends on what you're used to, but message one goes out as early as next week. Message two is a remail. So just need a new subject line for that. Message three is still an early Black Friday type message. Um, four is gonna be that central Black Friday message with a remail. Six is gonna be that Cyber Monday or extended message and then a remail after that. Um, I would not use this method if again, your open rates are below 10% or you just, you don't feel that your list health or that your audience is gonna appreciate this. Like if you normally only send once a month and then all of a sudden you send seven times, it's, that's obviously not going to go very well. But if your audience is used to hearing you from every week, then this cadence should work out pretty well for you. And again, I would recommend sending early in the morning unless you start doing some testing or can utilize some other data point. And what is a remail? That I know that's a question sometimes. This, this is a, a a premium feature. This is a paid feature, but it's also a feature that huge, huge businesses utilize all the time. And it's, it's actually pretty simple, um, but it generates really great results. So you're going to send the same message to people who didn't open with a new subject line. Uh, so normally you, you, we know that that person hasn't seen that message. So by just changing the subject line, we're able to utilize the same message twice. So it cuts down on your work. And typically, as far as results go, you're gonna see about 50% of the original results, meaning you're gonna get about 50% more clicks. So if your open rate on your original message is more around 30%, then your email should be more around 15. Um, it's, it's a great way to drive additional sales. Um, however, you just really don't wanna overdo it. I know it's easy, it just takes a click of a button and a new subject line and it's super simple. Just don't overdo it because it is still mailing to your audience a little bit more. So I reserve it for you know some of the, the bigger sales or the bigger events of the year. And this is it, this is the Super Bowl. This is when you would wanna utilize it. Um, the seven part kind of long traditional Black Friday, Cyber Monday, um, this is much more on kind of a sneak peek early sales message one. Um, there's a remail of that, um, that countdown timer um, sale, you can promote um, that the sale will start on Friday, or you could have your own sale early on. Um, the day of, you want to make sure to show off those products, have that countdown timer. Um, as you can probably tell, you kind of utilize a lot of the same principles I just spoke through with the three part, but you're extending it out one week in advance. And then, and adding remails. And then for six and seven, like I said earlier, you could turn those into, you could kind of rebrand that, do a different promotion and turn those into Cyber Monday messages if you want to. But if you don't know if your audience is really gonna resonate with that and you wanna play it a little safer, you could just have it be one big Black Friday sale that got extended. I will say a little bit of a pro tip here is that as people start to feel the urgency go up, um, you know, the the more they could potentially sh shop. That's why flash sales do so well. So if you wanted to on that seventh message, you know, you could have that countdown timer only have like three or six hours left on the clock and say like, okay, only three hours left or a sale ends at noon today or something like that to really like help motivate people to get out the door. And again, you can find all of this plus subject lines in the PDF. And then for the alternative um, in here, again, you're utilizing a lot of the same message themes as you did in the three part, um, but you're putting more of an early focus. 
on those messages that'll go sooner. You're going to make sure to have a thankful message in there. Um, you'll do the Black Friday. I still think it's good to like get in on that brand name, but tie it to the USP. And then you'll utilize the remailing along with kind of that not you're not going to really need to do that extended message you might not need to say that it's extended um, based on how you're doing your promotion but you could maybe say that like supplies are limited because they very well could be that you only have so many things left and then again you can go ahead and take a look at that at page 17. so in review we've talked about what approach are you going to take you're going to take traditional you're going to take alternative and then what kind of promote how are you going to how are you going to angle this promotion and timely event together? So how is that going to fit together with your unique sales proposition so that it's interesting to people? And then finally, what's your sending frequency time of day? All We've discussed all of these points. And so I hope in your mind, you've kind of already penciled in the answers here as I'm talking through them. That together makes up your strategy, right? And at a baseline approach of what it's going to be. And here in a moment, I want to talk through what some of those questions are around those strategies and maybe even jump into that PDF to talk through some of the subject line ideas. Um, but I'm all about also making sure that you make progress too. So, you know, depending on how you work, um, let's say you want to get that seven part up and running by the end of today, just decide what you want to do. Um, which campaigns you want to um, take advantage of and make sure to get the PDF attachment, start thinking about that copy. Um, by the end of tomorrow, get it and figure out a template you want to utilize or get some images together and create your series. And then by Monday, um, get that, get the pre-written copy that's already in the PDF, put it into those templates, customize it, and then schedule out the newsletters. You could easily do that over this time schedule, or you could honestly do it by the end of today if you wanted to and just have it done and dusted. Um, it, it's up to you and when you can find time to do things, but you definitely do have time to get qu quite a bit of progress done by next Monday. All right, what else? Um, so there's plenty of other things that we've could have uh, spoken about today, but wanted to keep it to kind of the strategy side. Um, I, I cannot emphasize this enough, how important your automations are, especially multi-part automations during such a competitive time of year and heading into 2021. So if you want help on setting those up, please watch this video that we've got. We'll, we'll send you the link. We've got resources for that. Very quick and easy to get those set up. And then, of course, also you want to make sure that it is quick and easy for people to sign up for your email marketing, um, because that way you can remarket to them later on. So think about it this way. If it's such a big time of year for sales right now, that means you have that many more people to market to in 2021, meaning that's how many people you have to come back and buy more. So it's, it's kind of a snowballing effect that you really want to get in on. Um, I've got plenty of resources here for you to take a look at, um, go through a lot of different things step by step. Uh, Brian actually just put together a really cool video on how to just customize a template that makes it really quick. And, and I'm not that technical, but I was able to take one of those templates and customize and build out three seven part series in a very small amount of time. All right. And now I want to kind of lead more into questions. Of course, we do have off, office hours for paid users that's coming up tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern time. So we have some more time to kind of talk through things. Um, but of course, we always have support open for any user. Um, you can open a case or a chat at any time. But why don't we go ahead and dig into dig into some questions? And I, you know, I'm willing to stay on the line a little bit longer if you guys are able to. So I'm willing to sit here and, and answer as many questions as we can. Um, Brian, what what kind of questions do we have? Yeah, absolutely. We've had some really great questions uh, coming in. So uh, Chris and I have been trying to handle some of those as we go through, but I was uh, actually saving some of uh, the more interesting ones for you to address. Um, before we get to that, I do just want to mention for everyone, uh, if you're not sticking around for questions, we will send out a link uh, for the recording after this. Um, and we will also have the, uh, the PDF, a couple of people that were having issues with the PDF link, uh, we will send that out uh, along with the recording link. So keep your eyes out for that one. Um, for those of you that are sticking around for questions, uh, we've got some great ones here. Keep them coming in the Q&A feature and that way we'll, uh, we'll be able to track them. 
uh, and make sure that we don't lose them in the chat. All right, so a couple of cool questions here, uh, Kestrel. One of them uh, is really going with kind of that alternative approach. So uh, part of my business USP is that part of my profits go to wildlife organizations. So I was mm -hmm. thinking of increasing that percentage for Black Friday, Cyber Monday, as that's mm -hmm. what my core customers' beliefs are. Would that mm -hmm. be a good approach? Yeah, I think so. I mean, not, I mean, obviously everything has to make sense from like a monetary standpoint for yourself too. So I always need to put in that disclaimer, but, you know, I think that that's a great chance to show off what you're doing and to have some eyeballs on it as well. So I think that building that into your strategy is something that your users will really appreciate. And I think that maybe you even want to go so far as kind of almost like an anti Black Friday strategy, kind of like what Patagonia does every year. And I think um, not North Face, but REI does this too, um, where they're kind of saying like, look, uh, yeah, Black Friday is all about shopping, but like, let's actually do some good. Let's do some good with this money today. And you're going to want to really make sure that you've got that iconography, those images of those animals or that habitat that you're helping out and some like live examples of the work that they do so that they don't just see it as like, oh yeah, I'm going to give money and like things will happen. No, like show me how I'm helping. Show me really what's going on. Um, because I, I know for me, that's what I, that's what motivates me. And I, I know that's what motivates other people too. So I think that's great for you to, for you to build into the strategy for your alternative Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Yeah, I'll say that I've had a couple of uh, brands that I'm subscribed to and uh, they've, they've caught me with those, those promotions. So um, when I saw a double down on the, the social giving aspect, I said, you know what, I've been looking at this for a while. So I went ahead and, and pulled the trigger on those myself. Mm -hmm. Um, a couple of other good questions here. So uh, how would you recommend tying up the e-newsletters with social media? Meaning how do I get more subscribers through social media without giving them too much or not enough for them to be interested in, in subscribing to the, uh, to the newsletter? So kind of balancing the social media and email aspects there. Mm, yeah, I would, so I would kind of think of both as like two different personality types. And that, so social media, you might think of as kind of like, that's my fun personality where I post, you know, it's very photo and kind of like short blurbs or meme related or whatever, you know, like that's gonna, that's gonna be for this set of content or this set of things. But my email, my email is gonna focus on how products are made or, you know, kind of the process behind the products or how we source things or maybe how to style it together. So they each have their own little unique value that they can kind of toss back and forth. And so obviously the pros of social media are, it's really great for imagery, you know, really stunning imagery and short snips of text. But the power of email is that you can kind of get into things a little bit more and you can kind of talk through stuff in a little bit of a longer format. It also can hold lots of links. So I would think about those are kind of the pluses of those two channels and then think about how your content can flow into those two different channels. Yeah, that's awesome. A um, couple other good questions that have just come in through here. Um, one question was, uh, if I have a new line of products that was launched very near to uh, the Black Friday, Cyber Monday, just before it starts, is it a good idea to include them in the sale or does that devalue them too much? I mean, that's the crux, right? Like you have to kind of figure out, that, you know, that's that's a part of your overall brand too. You know, if I just announce something, then am I losing ground with it? I mean, especially in fashion, right? That's been such a huge problem and kind of why fat, the fashion and clothing industry is kind of going through a lot of tough stuff right now because that's what, you know, the department stores were doing for years is just buying, you know, getting new product in and then immediately slashing the price. So it's up to you, but personally, no. I mean, like I would try to hold on to the specialness of it a little bit more and I would put it with more of an alternative promotion. So whether that's free gift wrap or free product with purchase, like pair of socks with jacket or something like that um, or gift wrap or shipping. And then I would really double down on the aspects of the new product that make it so special. So, you know, whether it's the fabric or whether it's, the materials or how it fits or what it's good for. Maybe it's good for something during the holiday season um, that, you, that you really wanna focus on. People will pay a premium for that. 
right, a couple other good ones here. Keep the questions coming. Uh, it seems like we're slowing down just a little bit on the questions, but still a couple of other great ones here. So uh, let me take a look real quick. There is one that I want to address. I've seen a couple of questions that have come in about um, the different types of discounts in Shopify and which ones to use. So um, I want to address this one a little bit just from a uh, just from a use uh, standpoint and kind of a functionality standpoint, which is the difference between the automatic discounts or, or discount codes. Um, so Seguno actually will be able to share discount codes and even unique discount codes out with your subscribers. While the automatic discounts are going to be more like that site-wide promotion where as anyone that goes to your site will just automatically, or they will just automatically have that discount code apply or that discount apply, excuse me. So when you're coordinating between your automatic discounts and your discount codes, uh, just think that if you received a discount in your inbox and then you went to the site and you saw that there was actually just a better general discount, would you feel special about that one? So usually I'm my uh, kind of approach there is that I'm gonna wanna make sure that the discount codes that I'm sharing for my subscribers are gonna make them feel a little bit more special, a little bit more likely to purchase there. So just something I wanted to address there. Keep in mind guys that Shopify only allows you to apply one discount code per purchase. Uh, so that you're not going to be able to stack those discount codes. You're not going to have to worry about that one so much. Uh, I know discounts are really important. The other uh, things that I want to call out just real quick before I pass it back to you, Kestrel, is um, with the discount codes that you send out through Seguno, uh, the really nice thing is that we'll go ahead and highlight those discount codes with all the prices in the email so that it will show the, the actual price for them to make that purchase. They don't have to do the mental math. Um, and then we'll also apply that discount code uh, when they click through on any of the featured product or featured collections, basically any of the links that take them back to the shop. So uh, really nice to be able to, uh, to do that one there. Um, let me see here, finding a couple other ones uh, real quick. Um, any advice on how to grow your audience and get more people to sign up prior to Black Friday, Cyber Monday? I know this kind of goes back into the social media, but uh, I'll let you address that one if you would, Kestrel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, so, you know, social media is a great way and they definitely share, um, you know, your audience is going to see both and the likelihood of somebody, if somebody's on multiple channels with you, so they follow you on social media and email, they're more likely to purchase from you overall. So it's great to get back and forth. Um, you know, you could always run some kind of like sharing campaign, um, some kind of like friends and family discount type thing um, along with Black Friday or some kind of like sharing or photo contest. Um, these are all kind of ploys that you can use to help your audience that you already have be able to spread it um, and be able to get a new audience coming in. And of course the social, you know, Instagram is a loud place, but you know, you can do quite a bit of targeting on there as well. So it can be really helpful to be able to kind of kind of go out and acquire people through social media and then you retain them, keep them coming back through email marketing. Um, you can make your, as far as just getting email to create more list growth for yourself, you can, have, you can always put in the messaging of your email, you know, share this with your friends um, or, you know, forward this to a friend. Those can also be kind of passive ways to help people kind of know who you are and potentially if you combine it with a discount code you can you can get some more sales that way too I've, I've seen that be effective um, but I would really think as far as just acquisition um, you know just getting new names you know first time lookers onto your website that is where social media um, and other paid tactics can be really helpful and then email marketing make sure that once they've come to your site and they sign up and then you can get them to come back. Awesome. Let's see here. A couple other good ones. Uh, again, if you guys do have any other questions, um, we are running out of questions. So if you're enjoying this or if you have any other questions, please do put those in the, in the Q&A here. So um, one question uh, from someone that's uh, going to be a bit more ambitious, probably looking more at that long form uh, marketing mm -hmm. calendars. Would offering uh, different offers for each day be too much? Uh, so could you stretch out Black Friday for a week? I'm just wondering oh, yeah. if it would help to get people to sign up for emails if they know that's the only way they'll find out about each deal. Oh, yeah. 
Oh yeah. And it's, I mean, like I've had clients who've done that and it's crushed, like it's done really well. The only problem though, is that it does take quite a bit of coordination on your part. So like it has this, we call it the advent calendar sometimes or daily deals. And like you put a timer in each one and it ends every day at like nine and then tomorrow's deal, you don't know what it's going to be. And like, it can do really, really well. Um, I had a client saw huge sales from that. And I've seen that over and over again. Um, it, it, but it does take quite a bit of setup. So, I mean, start start now. Get your If you can get your ducks in a line now for that, great. Um, but it is a little bit more complicated, um, which is one of the reasons why I didn't make it as one of the primary strategies we promoted today, because it just does take a little bit more work, but it can be really effective. And that's another great way of utilizing um, a template, right? And then making it a little bit more formulaic where you can kind of, you know, replace, just copy and paste in like the new item, whatever it might be. And make sure that you also have like, you say that today is the fourth day tomorrow, you know, four out of seven days of deals, we've got three more deals. What's tomorrow's deal going to be in like a mystery there? Um, Really play that up. That can go really well for you. Happy to take a look at that too. Um, If you come to office hours tomorrow and um, you've got a draft of anything like that, happy to take a look at it. Yeah, I was going to say that would be a fun one to to work through. So uh, lots of of great ideas to be able to come up with there. Um, We did have another question here kind of going along with that, uh, which is, do you have any tips about using uh, shorter timers and emails? Uh, So any best practices or gotchas people should watch out for? Yeah, yeah, no, I did a test a long time ago on a flash sale that was like 12 hours long, six hours long, like three hours long. And like the shorter one always does better because there's like that sense of urgency, but the gotcha is that uh, people will miss it and then not be very happy with you because they missed the sale. Um, So you wanna make sure to set up those rules kind of in advance. Um, I think that is a really good place for the timer to go though um, and to make them kind of a a shorter timeframe. I just think that you have to be prepared that somebody's gonna say like, oh, I just saw this in my inbox. Like, can I get the next one or whatever the, the case might be, you might have to deal a little bit with customer service there, but um, I wouldn't recommend anything shorter than three hours. Um, Just, I mean, yeah, you you could try, I mean, you could try it. It just, it makes me nervous from like the logistics standpoint um, and like site speed and everything like, uh, but uh, I think, you know, something that ends at a time when everybody is awake um, is also kind of nice because you could always send out like a last minute message um, so you could do two messages in one day, which don't, it, it is totally acceptable. It happens during busy times of year. Um, don't overdo it, be cautious with it. But I mean, you, you can, especially if you target people who maybe opened, but, um, didn't convert. So yeah, no, I would go with kind of a shorter time frame, more around the six hour mark, four hours maybe, and, um, just make it really clear when it's going to when it starts and when it ends. And you could, if you wanted to, make sure to send out an email the day before saying, we're gonna have a flash sale from like nine to 12 tomorrow or something like that. Yeah, I think promoting that ahead of time is a a really neat idea too, Mm -hmm. because I know that uh, I have definitely sat down on the the couch after dinner, opened up my own email, all of a sudden I look and I've missed an awesome sale. So Mm -hmm. um, (laughs) some of those, like you said, you just kind of got to watch out for that. Mm -hmm. Um, Another good question here, are there any analytics to prove that using emojis uh, help in your email (laughs) marketing or have you noticed a trend in using emojis versus no emojis? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I've run quite a few tests with different clients and it always just depends from client to client and like industry to industry. Um, Cause I think some it's just made for like emojis just makes such great sense. Um, and then others, eh, maybe not so much. They're not going to get it. Um, I think that emojis can be neat because they do still stand out in the inbox. And I know that with some people that I get email marketing from, there's kind of like little inside jokes, almost kind of like um, something you would find in like an Instagram description or something. Like there's kind of a fun little back and forth joke that's going on there. Um, But as far as stats go, generally, 
this is me being very, but generally I see emojis help. I don't think you want to go too overboard, but I do think visually it helps you stand out in the inbox a little bit more. Um, and so if you can kind of put it together with the right words, I, I think it's a good thing to, to try out. Um, I've never seen them tank an open rate by any means. Um, the worst I've ever seen them do is just kind of m perform about the same, but I have seen them do pretty darn well. Yeah, I, I have a couple that I like to use. Um, I kind of think of those as just the, the couple that are on my palette um, for some brands that I'm I'm working with. So, you know, I think that the point that you mentioned there about keeping with the tone is, is really important uh, and kind of matching your brand there. So, um, great question. Um, just for those of you that are wondering about how to use some uh, use emojis in your subject lines or your preview text or in your messages, um, you can copy and paste them into your email editor with Sibuno or uh, if you're if you're on a Mac, I know it's a, just a, a right click um, when you're in the subject line editor. Uh, and then there's the option to be able to, uh, to insert the emojis. I apologize, I'm a little bit rusty on my, my PC shortcuts, um, but you can always just go and uh, search for emojis or emoticons uh, on Google and then copy the ones that you're interested into your subject line. Um, for most people, those emojis are gonna load just fine, um, but there are going to be some folks that might not be able to see the original version of the emoji. Um, that's just going to be tied to kind of the system that people are uh, opening your email on. So just something to kind of keep in mind. You don't want to make the whole subject line emojis, um, just a couple there uh, that you know are going to be pretty universal. Um, so those are definitely fun to play with. All right, let me see here. Um, I don't believe we've had too many other questions here. Uh, let me see. There is one here about um, a question. So I'm just now uh, starting up uh, my email marketing and I want to import my email marketing list to my uh, Shopify customers. Uh, how can I avoid uh, getting my messages to look like a, look like spam? So how do I uh, kind of warm up and, and get a healthy email reputation that way? Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Brian, this is your question, favorite right? There's a I, lot that goes yeah. into that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I mean, that's a whole nother webinar. Um, but like, first of all, just gut check and real talk you know, like, is it a good list, right? Like, is your MailChimp list a healthy list? Like if you send out of your MailChimp, like what are those open rates? That's kind of your list health a little bit there along with like how many hard bounces or unsubscribes you get. So that's kind of a gut check you have to do. I would take your best, your, so people who are consistently opening and clicking from MailChimp and port those over. People who have already kind of like mentally unsubscribed from you, they're not really that valuable anymore, um, not in like a long-term sense, and they potentially have, can do a lot more harm than good. So, you know, I would, I, people who are more recently added to your list and people who have, you know, consistently opened and clicked, I'd bring them in. And then I'd send um, kind of a, a few s smaller sends out at a time. Of course, this all depends on how big your list is. But I would do a few smaller sends at a time to get that the, the domain to to stay warm and of course um, to keep anything disastrous from happening. And then some basic rules with not looking like spam um, is you know you want to write like a human to another human. So you want to make that subject line make a lot you know be common sense. You want to have that email full of. Um, you know, nice images of your products and um, some copy that makes sense in a standard promotion. Um, you know, you won't, don't, you don't act like a, a spammer, you know, like a, don't promote any miracle fixes. Don't um, ask for anybody's account number. You know, there's, there's simple things like that that can, that can help out. Um, but really we could lead an entire another um, multiple webinars on this. Um, but I, I would say the first thing to start off with is really bring good stuff into Saguno and that will only put you one, you know, one step further that when you start to send out from Saguno, you'll start to see really great open rates, of course, too. And then make sure to, you know, write subject lines and messages according to best practices. That would be, you know, at a high level. Um, Brian, I know you deal a lot with this too right now. Do you have, I'm sure you have something to, to add to that. 
Yeah, I think you you mentioned there, um, and this is this is something like you said. There's a lot, and you can you know write papers on it, and tons of resources out there. But the uh, the big thing is that you mentioned is having a good healthy list to start with really makes a the difference. So uh, sending messages to people that people want to receive, um, and content that that's interesting to them um, is really going to be the big thing um, in terms of what you really want to watch out for. Of uh, you know, are there um, you know, is, are there, is there a storm on the horizon is if your complaint rate is, is getting up a little bit higher or anything like that, that's when you're going to start to notice that um, you're probably not going to be placed in the inbox as much. Um, from a, a system standpoint, I know I've mentioned this or answered this uh, for another question that, that we had come through privately, but Segundo does a lot of the back end stuff automatically for you. So you really don't have to, to worry much about, um, you know, is Segundo doing the right things to get me to the inbox? Um, really, you just have to kind of think of it from, like Kestrel was saying, a, a content creation standpoint um, and, and not being abusive by any means with that. So um, lots of good stuff uh, there. I think maybe we'll have to uh, we'll have to start brainstorming on a webinar for that content. Uh, it's mm -hmm. really good to hear that people are interested in uh, mm -hmm. keeping a healthy email list um, and not just interested in, in spamming a bunch of people. So uh, that's great to hear. Yeah, I love it. Definitely. Uh, so there are there's only one other question here which i'm just going to mention because i can't type fast enough uh, to be able to answer that so um, along with the email recording can we look at some of the other webinar and e-shops uh, that were here for uh, inspiration so um, I, we didn't get permission to share out the full list for everybody ahead of time but we do have um, some office hours coming up and during those office hours we'll definitely be doing uh, you know if we need to do some live teardowns or some guidance or looking at examples that people are willing to share um, so if you want to get more inspiration from that uh, and work with other shops that are on Sukuno, so you know that you can do that as well, um, definitely check out those office hours. Um, we will be hosting those again um, through the end of the holiday season, uh, available for all of our, our paid users. So uh, keep an eye out for those uh, and we'll be doing our best for that. Um, I think that's wrapping up our questions for today. Uh, a couple of last moment ones that are just kind of coming in, we'll be able to handle those as well. Um, but everyone, I just want to say thank you uh, for joining us. I hope that you found this to be really valuable. Um, we are here to help you out uh, for this really important time as we're getting closer to holidays. So um, keep any questions that you have coming to us through support. Uh, again, support is always available for every customer. Uh, just click on the talk to support button up in the top right. Uh, and you can either open up a support case, which we'll get back to as quickly as possible, or if it's during Eastern time business hours, uh, so Monday through Friday, nine to five Eastern time, uh, you can give live chat a try uh, and we'll try to, uh, to see if we can answer your question in, in real time and talk to you that way. Um, Kestrel, anything else you wanna say before we wrap it up for today? Um, no, I mean, I think that we you know, were able to get to quite a few things, um, you know, as usual, if anybody has any outstanding questions, you can always email me too at Kestrel at Saguno. Happy to, to answer some one-offs for people, but I hope we gave you plenty of information to kind of think on and that you're really able to act as quickly as possible towards Black Friday and Cyber Monday. There's definitely a lot of money on the table, so I want to make sure you're able to take advantage of it. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone, we hope you have a great rest of your afternoon or evening. I know um, just a quick call out, we had somebody join uh, from Romania. So I think it was nine o'clock for them. Uh, so uh, I hope you have a great evening. We're, we're really flattered that, uh, that you were joining us. So, all right guys, awesome. good luck with everything and we'll talk soon. Thanks everyone.